Walton Hall. Walton Hall. Walton Hall. Uh, that's a special place in the whole world. Most of the Ghost Army, not including the Sonic Unit, sailed to England on May 2nd, 1944. They arrived in Bristol on May 15th and headed north. We were at um, Walton Hall, which was near Stratford-on-Avon. And we had uh, tents set up on the estate. And the officers, of course, lived in the hall itself. The men called it the castle, or Moldy Manor. This is the first time that I saw a rubber tank. They didn't see inflatables until they got to England, because industry was still catching up with them. Joe Spence came to Walton Hall later as a replacement and found the experience bewildering. I didn't really know what outfit this was. I saw a whole regiment of British paratroops around the place. And I wonder, what could this be? And I'm walking down this road, and all of a sudden, I see four guys, one on each end of a General Sherman tank, picking the thing up. And I practically collapsed, because I thought, gee, I could never pick up a tank. <laughs> they were still at Walton Hall when D-Day came, June 6, 1944. A few days later, some of the men heard the sounds of a bridge being built nearby. When they went to investigate, there was no bridge, just a half-track with a speaker mounted on top. The sonic unit had arrived. Ghost Army soldiers frequently visited nearby towns, sometimes with interesting results. And we were at Stratford-on-Avon. I don't know if that rings a bell to you, but that's Shakespeare's town. And the streets were narrow, cobblestone, and I remember driving down a street and parking because the sidewalks were pretty wide, but the streets were pretty narrow. Uh, we'd drive and we'd park partially on a sidewalk and partially on the, on the pavement there. And one shop owner came out and he said, you bloody Americans can't tell the difference between a street and a sidewalk in their own language. So the next morning, and I hope our out now it won't make any difference, the next morning we drove through there and nine-ton half-track driving down these cobblestone streets pretty fast. I can remember panes of glass falling out of the windows. <laughs> so now that was our way again. Being young, you know, today I'd know better. In the unit's official history, Fred Fox wrote, some men attended the superb plays staged by the Shakespeare Memorial Theater in Stratford-on-Avon but most seemed to prefer the more realistic pleasures of Leamington Spa. That's where Lieutenant Bernie Mason discovered flag wavers. Flag wavers were drinks that consisted of a red, I don't know whether it was grenadine or some kind of liquor, it was bright red, white gin, so we had the red and white, and if you had enough of them, the next morning you felt very blue, so that was the patriotic drink, and we called them flag wavers. The time in England was all too short. Soon, they would be leaving the friendly confines of Walton Hall for a more dangerous place, the hedgerows of Normandy. <laughs> 